And welcome back to coverage here of the World Championship. Yeah, in the words of Akawa there, he really kind of summed it up. He's never played a pro tour, We're talking about Mori here, but he's played in the World Championship. It really is a pretty incredible feat to see how this player has risen up. And we've got him in the feature this round against the juggernaut of this field. Andre Strosky is currently sitting at six and oh. Now, if you've been paying attention, you know that you only need to get to seven wins to lock up that top four, and he may be doing it straight through, Paul. Yeah, I mean, he's been completely unstoppable. But kind of coming into this matchup, I expect Mori to potentially kind of put a wrench in his plans because, uh, you know, Mori specifically chose Azorius Tempo here, uh, an off-meta deck to target the Is It Epiphany decks. You know, Mori's always been kind of that person known for playing slightly different decks to success. He's showing that here. And I mean, if you just take a look at this list, it looks like it could be a potential nightmare matchup for the Epiphany deck. I mean, you're playing a deck with main deck copies of Malevolent Hermit, main deck copies of Concerted Defense, Redain, Elite Spellbinder. This deck is able to put on a clock while also having disruption to prevent, you know, getting blown out by potential sweepers such as uh, Burn Down the House or even stopping the combo altogether. Really looks like a nightmare. And when we asked Mori about why he chose this Azorius deck for the tournament, Paul, he said, first sentence, my deck is targeting Is It Control. Like he built this deck because he predicted the metagame to be Is It Control heavy. And well, he was right. It ended up being exactly the case. Yeah. And All right, let's get underway here, Paul. How, how do things um, look here for as far as opening hand goes for our players? Yeah, it, it looks like we have the player and hand cams a uh, little swapped here. You're right. Uh, as Mori is, of course, on the the Azorius deck here. And it looks like uh, Mori doesn't have land number three, but he does have that loyal Warhound. So uh, looking to run out the adversary instead and run out the Warhound to try to find an additional mana source next turn. Yeah, the Warhound does a really good job of help, helping you get caught back up again. Yeah, but I mean, take a look at what Mori's working with here in his hand. I mean, he's he's got a couple of creatures on the battlefield. He's going to put the Warhound and the adversary into play. And then he's going to have, I mean, just look at all the cards that he has to kind of uh, uh, try to disrupt Andre here. He's got Redain, Spellbinder, Concerted Defense. You can flash in the adversary if you're concerned about counter spells from the opponent as well. Well, you can really see how this deck was aimed at the... I mean, when you're trying to, to resolve a six or seven mana sorcery, boy, your life is difficult when your opponent's packing Spellbinders, Redains, and Concerted Defenses. He's also got Malevolent Hermit in the main deck, which is another problem. And he's going to kick things off here with Elite Spellbinder. Yeah, some interesting decisions here. Um, probably not going with the divide by zero here. I iteration and Demon Bolt are probably the considerations there. Okay. We're getting these uh, cameras all swapped Voila. up for you. Again, apologies for that, but uh, thanks for your patience. And now you can see <laughs> exactly what's going on. And for folks who uh, maybe have not seen uh, Concerted Defense too much... Um, one important element of that is also keeping track of the party types that Mori will have on the battlefield as it uh, it basically counters a spell and forces you to pay one. But if you have creatures of a party type, it costs an additional one. And there are creatures in Mori's deck that do follow this condition. And a lot of the times this concerted defense will kind of act as a spell pierce effect, forcing Strasky to pay two mana to resolve his spells. That's right. As it stands though, Double Demon Bolt there off of Galvanic Iteration from Andre Strosky cleans up the board nicely. Now we know Elite Spellbinder, that will persist that ability, but the damage will not. They are now in the, in the graveyard and Strosky is sitting at 17. Wow, Spike Field Hazard off the top. Pretty good against Mori with all of his one toughness creatures. Yeah, that Hazard is looking really, really nice against that Loyal Warhound in play. I'm sure Strasky is also maybe thinking, is this the opportunity to run out this iteration? Uh, I, I have a pretty healthy life total. Um, or do I want to just preserve my life, preserve my life total even more, resolve this spike field hazard, and then still keep up Demon Bolt and Divide by Zero here? 
does look like the plan here, Paul, as we see yet another creature go to the graveyard. And it's getting a little thin here for Noriyuki Mori taking a look at his hand. He's got Spectral Adversary, Redain, and Concerted Defense. Still enough to affect the board, but you got to start getting a little worried that he hasn't been able to keep a single creature on the board. Yeah, I mean, Strasky just kind of had the ideal draw here so Perfect. far for this matchup, right? Just able to deal with every single one of Mori's creatures. You know, part of the... Part of the problem or, or some of the issues that this is it that kind of runs into uh, is the fact that you, you are playing sometimes a deck that has some clunky draws, right? You're playing a deck with a bunch of seven drops. And if your hand is glutted with those cards in your opening hand, then you just run out of interactive spells and you get run over before you get to combo off. But with Strasky's hand this game, I mean, double Demon Bolt, Spike Field Hazard, multiple Divide by Zeros, he basically just kind of has all the answers. Yeah, you know, you and I were talking about the matchup earlier today, and, you know, we were talking about how you often don't want to have, you know, your really expensive combo pieces, your non-interactive stuff in your opening hand. You want to kind of use the interactive stuff early and then set up for that. You know, we call it a combo finish. It's not exactly quite that, but close enough. And uh, that's exactly what Strasky's doing here. He just has all of the reactionary stuff. Now, it is a little interesting that he hasn't found any pieces of the combo yet. So he will want to get that going at some point. But he's got a lot of time. We see Spectral Adversary go on the stack here for Mori, but a little awkward with his mana here, Paul. He's got all white sources and just the one blue. Yeah, so he can't pump it up. Uh, you can pay one colorless and a blue to give it plus one, plus one counters. Also, it's a nice way to save your creatures from maybe a potential sweeper as you can phase them out. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's still a threat that's on the battlefield with Flash, right? And right. it just means that basically you can kind of play this tempo game where you play cards on the end of your opponent's turn, which kind of throws them off balance a bit in terms of how they spend their mana. Elite Spellbinder off the top of the library for Mori is a nice find as he gets to run this out perhaps ahead of a Redain and figure out what he wants to do as far as game plan goes. Yeah, and, and this is kind of awkward here for Strasky. I mean, you can divide by zero, but Mori has six lands in play, so he can just simply replay the Spellbinder. That's right. So this one is going to resolve. And this is where Elite Spellbinder really shines, right? A big part of Strasky's defense are in-bounce spells, and they're just not very good against Elite Spellbinder. Ooh, Ooh interesting. Ooh, burn down the house off the top of the library. But keep in mind, Elite Spellbinder is a cleric. So that concerted right. defense in Mori's hand will act as a spell pierce. So Strasky will have to pay two mana. So if he runs that burn down the house here, it'll just get countered. It's got to be tempting from Strasky's side. It looks like he may just be lining up Galvanic Iteration Demon Bolt here, Paul. Yeah. Is that the plan? That's what it looks like. Uh, I, I'm wondering when he's going to kind of choose the timing on this, though. There's doesn't seem to be a huge reason to go for it right now on his on his main phase. Could potentially consider doing it on Mori's upkeep to prevent him from drawing maybe more counter spells. Okay. Yeah, he has passed the turn, and you do see he's got to stop on his upkeep, just like you described there, Paul. So here's Galvanic Iteration. This one's going to get flashed back. And now he has Demon Bolt to do four. Well, in this case, to each of the creatures. Right, and concerted... This is the, the second time he's done this this game, Paul. Yeah, and taking full advantage of this iteration, you know, oftentimes you just see iteration being saved to just go for the quote-unquote combo, right? You're like, oh, I need these iterations to combo with my Iron's Epiphany, but Strasky just using it as just an additional removal spell, and, I mean, he's still sitting at a pretty healthy 15 life here. He's done a great job of mitigating Mori's attack. And keep in mind, he still has that expressive iteration, you know, kind of on the side to just kind of uh, uh, get ahead on cards here, too. So he's just playing a straight is it control deck right now, and it's it's working out very well for him. So finally, Redain hits the battlefield. There's Fading Hope off the top of the library. And the interactive spells just don't stop here for Strasky. Normally, you'll see a, a much bigger mix of, uh, you know, card filtering or card draw in addition to these type of things, but for whatever reason, he's just drawing basically every spell that can kill stuff. Outside of this, this is kind of key here, is expressive iteration. And it yeah. looks like he can go expressive into Galvanic. 
Yeah, and it's really nice that he was able to find an untapped land here. This does allow him to ha use the Field of Ruin that he has to deal with that Cave of the Frost Dragon that's in play. And if mm. he does, then, I mean, Noriyuki Mori is just, just only swinging in for two damage a turn here. Yeah, Ostrowski at 15, even at this late stage of the game, has done a fantastic job of controlling the board. Finally, a second blue source here for Mori, but I'm not sure how relevant it is at this point. Looks like he's going to fire up Cave of the Frost Dragon to try to turn that 2 into a 5. But as you can see, Strosky has numerous ways to deal with, well, really whatever he wants here. The cave, sure, he can even get an island and still cast Fading Hope here. I think the the thing that Strosky is maybe considering is just the fact that Noriyuki Mori's list does play four copies of Fading Hope in the main. And so he could potentially use that to save his own creature. Mm -hmm. As it turns out, nope. Down goes the cave, and it is just two damage coming in from Redain, and this clock is just not enough to get the job done here. Now Strosky, with a ton of mana available, just needs to get through his library and start finding these combo pieces. Yeah. And, I mean, he does have those divide by zeros, right? He can he can also just maybe try to go for a mascot exhibition win here, right? I sure. mean, sure, he doesn't have an epiphany, but, I mean, if you can get that Rodane off the battlefield, you can copy mascot exhibition and just put a ton of power onto the battlefield. Yeah, this, this deck transitions to is it tokens quite seamlessly, as it turns out, with the exhibition, and then oh. sometimes the devils. Hey, there's an Alrun's epiphany. All right, so he's one mana short from trying to copy the Alrun's Epiphany. So we're going to see a foretell here. And the next turn, he will have the mana to be able to uh, copy that Alrun's Epiphany because it requires eight mana. Now, we might see Strasky be even a little bit more patient to maybe try to play around Concerted Defense. I'd be curious about that. I mean, currently, why not? right he's not facing any damage at all on the battlefield so he would certainly take that luxury in that scenario but that's up to mori and mori's going to put elite spellbinder on the stack nice little draw here and that's going to reveal some important information paul primarily burn down the house being in hand here for strosky yeah so this is going to probably take galvanic iteration which will make it really difficult for strosky to combo off I wonder if there's a slight consideration. It almost feels like it's a potential waste of a spell, but maybe a consideration of just casting the iteration, because if you do that, then it's it costs one mana less to copy Alrun's Epiphany because the flashback would cost three. Oh, a consideration for just putting it in your graveyard, basically. Right. Yeah, that's a, one of those narrow cases. An interesting point for sure. Oh, look at this. Teachings of the Archaics goes into hand here. That was one of his three choices off of the learn mechanic. But of course, we're going to see the Spellbinder go right back on the stack, and this time it will resolve. And Strosky seems content to just let Mori do some Spellbinding here. Yeah, and, and interesting to see what Mori takes here, right? Because he has the two copies of the Concerted Defense, maybe he wants Strosky to go for the combo, as he can actually counter both, both the Epiphany and the Copied Epiphany, right? Because Strosky has exactly eight mana here so if he goes iteration into epiphany mori just goes defense defense counter what you're trying to do and then hopefully try to win with his flyer <laughs> that'd be pretty sweet to get both of them right but then if you're strosky sky then you're wondering why didn't he take the iteration i have something that's foretold it's probably epiphany do you really have double counter in your hand he might be able to sniff it out if that happens well it's going to be burned down the house it's going to get given that extra tax there. And so he didn't take the iteration. So now strosky has got to be thinking here. It's like, what do you have? You know I have Epiphany. Well, here's Galvanic iteration. And you can see he's going for it. So there it is. Elrun's Epiphany goes on the stack. And here we go with the double blue available here for Mori. He can actually fight back. And, and you have to counter both copies here. I mean, your, your game plan here is to win with that Spellbinder. Even just letting it resolve and having those two birds in play is going to be problematic. Wow, what a play here from Noriyuki Mori.
But yeah, keep in mind, like... mm -hmm. if Strasky draws a land, he can still just cast that burn down, burn down the house, right? He is one mana short. So an untapped land here would be very, very big here for Strasky. Oh, no. Another epiphany was the draw step there, Paul. And all of a sudden, Mori is really threatening here. Let's see what happens, though. This epiphany, it will resolve. He is one mana short from, from casting it, it looks like. You're right. So You're uh, right. He's actually a mana short. My fault. Wow. <laughs> so now he has to go for divide by zero? Is he going for divide by zero to... What is he looking for here? I, I suppose just the extra mana source here. So now you do have the mana to cast Burn Down the House next turn, right? You go Divide by Zero, Environmental Sciences for the Land, Foretell Epiphany, right? Yep. You stay at 10. He's certainly and not dying this turn to a blue-white deck. There's three damage coming across Nox. Strosky down to seven. There's Redain back on the battlefield, but it's, oh, it's okay. a land, but it's a good one. But does this give Andre the window to do what he needs to do to clear this board with Burn Down the House? Yeah, I mean, Mori has no cards in hand, right? You just run, right. Down the, run out to Burn Down the House. There's a Cave of the Frost Dragon that's in play. That's going to put you down to four. But now that you get the Redain off the battlefield with the Burn Down the House this turn, that sets you up beautifully to get a clean iteration into Epiphany on the following turn. Oof. This got a lot closer than it looked from the early turns, but it looks like Strosky may be able to turn the corner here. Starting off with a sweeper is not a bad place to be when your life total is getting low. We're that probably is one expensive burn down the house. Hey, you know, a sweeper is a sweeper. <laughs> <laughs> Nine mana yeah. burn down the house, but. Uh... It's worth it. It's worth it for sure. <laughs> Intrepid adversary was the draw step. Boy, he could have used that a turn ago. Yeah, and I, he he definitely doesn't have the mana to kill with that cave of the frost dragon. But I mean, this is probably the biggest adversary I, I will have ever seen. Yeah, he's got ten mana available, Paul. <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, that's what a a seven a seven five adversary. Not the worst. Or, right, or, well, or, just... or 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 uh, just uh, just one pump. Yeah. All right, hit you for four down to three. This gives Mori effectively oh. two lethal threats. Wow, galvanic iteration here. He's already got one in the yard too. We're doing that. We're we're counting the mana here. We have ten mana, so he is one mana short of being able to go um, to be able to go double to do iteration. Both. Yeah. Yeah. So close. All right, but here we go. Two copies of Alrun's Epiphany go on the stack. That's going to be an extra two turns plus the four birds. Hall of Storm Giants could be a piece of the puzzle here as well. Perhaps yeah. forcing some action. Yeah, I mean, we're just looking for another Epiphany to close out the deal here. Uh, you know, we have the Deluge into the flashback, it looks like. Oh, it looks like we're just going to copy the Windfall here instead. Okay, well, this is going to get him a lot of cards. He's going to have to ditch one, but he'll get four. Okay, Test of Talents, Expressive Iteration. Not Fading quite. Hope Mountain. So he did not hit another Epiphany here, Paul. He's got another turn, though, after this and plenty of action. Yeah, I, I mean, the thing is, sure, he's not going to be able to kill Mori off the combo necessarily. But, I mean, look at his hand now, right? It's just yeah. how can Mori even just come back from all the resources that Strasky has access to now after... It's, it's an avalanche, isn't it? Yeah. He's going to cast Burn Down the House for the tokens here, it looks like, as well. Perhaps smash the adversary. That, I don't think he has lethal. we got to count up the mana here, but I, I don't think he has enough to... Double copy burn down. Oh, he can't even double copy burn down the house anyways. I think he's just going to run out the three three devils here. Yep. That'll let him attack in for a nice healthy hit. Well, he will want <clears throat> to take care not to, to forget the... Uh, the cave. The cave, that's right. 
Yeah, and it's pretty safe to just keep one bird back, even if Mori draws a removal spell, right? Uh, you do have the Fading Hope in your hand to bounce the cave if you really need. That's right. So he's got kind of backup plans for his backup plans here. There's a Jwari Disruption. As we see, the same draw step there for Mori, a Jwari Disruption. Just really pure misery at this point here for Mori as... I think he's looking over at his sideboard now because yeah. uh, the writing is on the wall here. Andre Strosky is going to pick up game number one and bring him tantalizingly close to the top four. And this is putting him in a position that we just haven't seen before. You know, he's looking to run the tables into the top four at the world championship. This is unprecedented, crazy stuff. We have had a few players before really kind of run away with it with incredible records. But I mean, this is, we're talking literally undefeated March into top four here for Strasky if he can pick up one of the next two games. If he wins this, he would have only had to play two rounds on day two to lock up his seat <laughs> into the top four. No That's sweat. That's a brag. <laughs> yeah, no sweat needed. And yeah, I mean, at this point we found Epiphanies. Uh, M yeah. Mostly a formality at this point, given how far ahead he was, but uh, but yeah. And there it is, Elrond's Epiphany off of another Galvanic iteration, and this is just going through the motions here for Strasky. And it's got to feel like that's what he's been doing the whole time. He has 3 0 his draft, and now he's up a game in his decider for top four. Paul, you know, you and I were slated to come in here on the second round of the second day here. I did not think that we would be calling a match that had top four implications now. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. thought maybe we'd be setting somebody up for a good run, but it turns out Andre Strosky had other plans. So game number one goes to Strosky. He picks it up in impressive fashion. It really did play out pretty close to exactly how he wanted. I would say that what Noriyuki Mori was able to do there was slow him down. That's it. He just yep. put a bunch of speed bumps out, but there was nothing stopping Andre in that first game. Yeah. If you, if any of you are interested in a how-to course on how to utilize the card Galvanic Iteration, well, just watch that game that Andre Strasky played. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It I was mean, huge. He sure he used it to copy the Epiphanies, but he was just able to use that to to get ahead on cards, use it as an effective secondary copy of Demon Bolts. I mean, he just completely maximized on what you can do with that card. Yeah. Galvanic Iteration. That game represented two extra demon bolts an extra windfall and a couple extra epiphanies i mean yeah. <laughs> you know he wasn't paying that much mana for for the privilege like that was really a clinic in how to use that card in the early game mid game and late game from strosky yeah and it looks like strosky probably had a a really straightforward sideboard plan against most of the decks that he expected in the field looks like he's taking a little more time here because mori is the lone person Submitting this blue-white tempo strategy here. Uh, looks like he likes the eggs, but curious if he likes the, the gold span dragons here as well. Uh, boarding out some copies of the Unexpected Windfall definitely does make sense when you're playing against with counter magic, as uh, you, know, you don't want to be setting yourself up for some negative two-for-ones here when you do discard a card in addition to trying to cast the windfalls. It gives me a shiver just to think of it, Paul. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't even fathom it. And apparently Andre can't either. Okay, let's take a look at the opening hands here. Can Nori fight back? Can Mori fight back? He's really brought this deck with this matchup in mind, and game one didn't go his way. You have to feel like post-board he feels better. Yeah, and Mori he has a... aimed this deck for this matchup. Yep, yep. He was a little more concerned about the mono-green matchup as the creatures are just higher quality in the green deck just on a mana per mana basis right pound for pound nobody's going to beat mono green in terms of how efficient the creatures are but if you look at the types of creatures that mori is playing i mean you see that hermit you see the spellbinder it was tailor-made to try to fight the is it decks mori's garnered a fan base very quickly as he's uh, risen up the ranks here of the professional play mainly because he is unafraid to build his own decks and bring something a little different to the table, and he really has a knack for it. He's done this now multiple times, and uh, uh, you know I've been doing coverage long enough to know that if you want to get fans, you bring some rogue decks, you bring something that you brewed up, and they will respect it, and that's what's happened here for Mori. And what a start here. Mori, the only thing that was missing was land number three, and he found it, and now, Oof. I mean, he just has just 
all kinds of action here, right? We have the Hermit, we have the access to counter with that, we have the defense, we have the Aspirant, so uh, a lot for Strasky to kind of try to fight through here. This is going to be a lot of early pressure. This is one of the ways that this deck can play out. You know, we see the, the more disruptive elements with the Spellbinders and stuff like that, but this is just going to be a lot of power and toughness early in the game backed up by some cheap counter spells, and that is a tried and true strategy. It works. I wonder if we're just going to see a concerted defense here. I bet we are. Oh, yeah. That's right. So Spell Pierce, as you put it earlier, Paul, very effective here. That's going to get Mori in for three. Ooh, okay, burn down the house for a little later might be the, the answer that he needs. Right now, for Strosky, the shields are down, and he does have divide by zero if he wants to set back Mori a bit. Yeah. I think, I think Mori... The, the card that he really wants again is probably land, right? That allows him to run out that elite spellbinder, play around Jawari Disruption, and also keep at the counter for the Hermit if Strasky tried to do something to respond to the spellbinder here. Really interesting spot here for Strasky as well, as he's got some stuff to do down the line. Epiphany, burn down the house, even has an expressive iteration, which he can cast a little bit later. But what does he do now? And it is going to be divide by zero. This is going to set back Mori the maximum that he can set him back. The most mana tied in this case, but also the most power. And here comes that Spellbinder. It was a land off the top, Paul, but not the one that he was hoping for. Yeah, yeah, but... Tap, tap this, land's a little tough there. Yeah, this will still be okay, given that Strasky chose to main phase that divide by zero. You're going to mm -hmm. see this play pattern a lot from Andre now because you're playing against a deck with Malevolent Hermits and Counter Magic. It plays very similarly to kind of how you would play if you're playing against a Mono Green Aggro deck because after Cyborg, they bring in four copies of Snakeskin Veil. So if the, wind, if the shields are down, you're going to see a lot of main phase removal spells being used to kill some of these creatures. So the Aspirant gets to do its thing. It's going to put the counter on itself and attack for two. It was actually expressive iteration, by the way, that got the extra tax from the Elite Spellbinder. That's putting a lot of pressure on that Malevolent Hermit, given the burn down the house that now Mori knows about. Yeah. I think maybe may perhaps Mori believes that, look, that expressive iteration just lets you dig three cards deeper to finding a lot of those cheap, efficient two mana removals spells that Strasky has access to mm -hmm. and just kind of wants to slow him down for that, knowing that, you know, it's pretty tough resolving a five mana sorcery in the early phases of the game against this blue-white deck with all the counter magic. Interesting yeah. sideboard tech here, too, from Noriyuki Mori. A singular copy of Ray of Frost as a, way to, as a way to basically d uh, deal with the sideboard package that a lot of these Izzet decks have in Smoldering Egg and Goldspan Dragon. As if the creature is red, it shuts off all abilities on that card. Very cool. Yeah, th those are the type of decisions that let you know that somebody went really deep right <laughs> you know when yeah. you end up with one ray of frost for the <laughs> is it mirror or the is it matchup you're you know what you're doing all right well it looks like strosky's going to force the issue here the malevolent hermit is on the battlefield but this really is a much must, must counter so it's effectively just going to be five mana kill your hermit here yeah and which we isn't good for strosky he's falling behind pretty hard here yeah he mori is two points short it looks like because he does have the adversary he could potentially get it for nine points of damage here so close for Mori. Very, very close. What is Strosky going to need to see here to get back out of this? Does he need another burn down the house? Yeah, another burn down the house would be great. I mean, the only creature land that Mori has in play is Hall of Storm Giants. So he doesn't have to worry about uh, dying to the hall just yet. He needs two more lands to kind of be able to do that. The, the thing that Mori's probably concerned about is, okay, I can get in some damage here, but what can I afford to play around, right? Can I afford to play around another burn down the house? Or do I just bang, need to bang. keep adding creatures onto the battlefield? And I think he probably just needs to play creatures. And you know what? If you play Legion Angel, not the end of the world. If, if a burn down the house. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> that's a burn down the house off the top of the library for Strosky. Exactly what we were talking about. And he's just going to be forced to run it out here. Yeah, there's a blue mana from Mori, but he's facing lethal from 
Well, actually, all three creatures are going to be lethal here. So he just has to play wow. burn down the house. What a top deck, though, for Strosky. And we are right back in the game. Mori takes it Goodness. in stride. But that was devastating for him. He does have a way to rebuild, though. The Legion Angel, the Adversary, even the Hermit. Oh, and there's the concerted defense. Oh, and the and the angel is a warrior. Yes, it is. Right. So if 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 Strasky just goes for Epiphany this turn to try wow. to stabilize and survive, then then it's going to get countered. Now he does have a divide by zero here to to stay alive, right? And he can probably he he might just go for that to try to go for the iteration into Epiphany next turn. This is a really sweet play here by Strosky because this is playing around a top decked concerted defense. Like he knows he didn't have it last turn or he would have cast it. So this is like really next level stuff here from Andre. You know, you would probably feel pretty confident that your epiphany would resolve here, but he's still gonna take his time and, uh, and play around everything that he can. He even gets the teachings here for full value um, <laughs> as it is four extra cards that uh, wow. Mori has. Incredible. If, drawing three as the control deck against blue white. Unbelievable. With teachings on cake. So can Mori rebuild in a way that actually lets him get there? I mean, yeah, right? Like Mori's still in this. He is, but I mean, Andre now has uh, a few answers and he doesn't, he, he's not going to go for the combo just yet, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he is one mana short. Those frost boil snarls will come into play tap, but he can just go for the kill on the angel. There is no risk of death here. He can now go for the iteration here. Uh, maybe even potentially play into a concerted defense. And that gives him even uh, a bigger window to try to get that combo off and not have to worry about that instant. Wow, that top deck from Strosky. I'm still huge. recovering. That was so huge for him. This guy sitting at 6-0, and oh, facing down three lethal threats with no answer for any of them. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he's right back in it and knocking at the door of that top four again. Yeah, and, and you can see Strasky really pondering, deciding whether or not he wants to run out that iteration or just wait and play around the concerted defense. Yeah, the defenses are getting stronger here, Paul. Now there's two of them. Yeah. Well, Although we'll he only see how has that goes. Okay. And, and you can see now Mori shifting gears here, going for the Geist instead to have two defenses up here. And and now Strosky can go for a disruption to potentially play around double defense or a negate type effect here for Mori. This is really sweet from Strosky too. He is playing so well. You know, r running out your Jwari Disruption into a spell that you know he your opponent can simply just tap a land. Yeah, and this way it guarantees, this way guarantees that you'll be able to at least resolve one copy of those Epiphanies, even if your opponent does have a Concerted Defense. This has been a sweet match. These two players going at it in the depths of standard. They, uh, they know every single interaction and it looks like we're going to see Andre Strosky fire up the Galvanic iteration. Once you see that thing go on the stack, it gets ugly for the opponent. Here comes Alrun's Epiphany. And yes, one of them can get countered, but the copy will not. Right. And that now Strosky on the following turn can go egg into iteration here. And keep in mind, by the way, that egg will get four counters when you cast that iteration because it just counts the mana that you spend to cast spells. So, and you mean expressive iteration. Here, expressive right? iteration, excuse yeah. me. We have two different iterations, Paul. We're iterating a lot. We can, we can just do all the iterating here, potentially. Actually, wait a minute. He's yeah, going to iterate the iteration? Oh, God. <laughs> and that means that the Smoldering Egg is going to transform now. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, what a turn here for Strosky. And look at what he finds. Did he play a Landis turn? I don't think he did. So he can even cast the Spike Field Hazard here. Or play it. Good God, that was only the first expressive iteration, by the way. So he's going to find two Alrun's Epiphanies off of these expressive iterations. This is unreal stuff here from Andre Strosky. Oh, it looked geez. like he was dead. And now all of a sudden, 
He is right back in business. One to the face. Get that Geist off the battlefield. And now, I mean, we're looking at double Epiphany in hand with an, an Ashmouth Dragon and the, and the two birds here. I mean, I, I don't see how Mori can, can fight through all of this. Man, I love how Mori played this. He really did make it difficult for Strosky, but Strosky has just found the things he's needed at the time that he's needed them. And now we see the full power of this deck on display. Galvanic iteration last turn just doing work. And now it's going to be Epiphany into Epiphany. <laughs> Taking a look at the library real quick there. Yeah, we're going to field and for foretell here. I guess he doesn't really have a great, great attack. Well, I mean... He probably just doesn't have an ideal attack here. That you know. Ashmouth Dragon, keep in mind, it's tapped, but it also doesn't have abilities. Okay, and drawing a land here is also relevant, right? He, yeah. he does, this is a time when he really wants to find one of those four mana card draw spells or an expressive iteration or something to get him through the library. And he finds another smoldering egg, not the worst, but he doesn't have anything to back it up here, Paul. Yeah. And, you know, he, he can't really get in a good attack here. So, you know, it's now kind of we're playing the waiting game here. But if we're talking about better top decks, you have to side with the Izzet deck here. Right. Now, this is going to be interesting because it looks like it's going to be Intrepid Adversary here for Mori. And this Angel is going to be massive. Yeah, it'll be a 6-5 here. So if Strasky wants to get it off the battlefield, he's going to have to put five tokens in front of it. Yeah, he sees those as five turns of blocking. He finds Fading Hope. Not great. Yeah, he could use the Fading Hope to try to reset the Ashmouth Dragon, right? Get that mm -hmm. Ray of Frost off and then replay it and then hope for a big spell. Or he can just choose to use it to surprise, ambush an intrepid adversary. Yeah, that could give him... Yeah, it, oh. it feels like he's content to just... Ooh, is that Memory Deluge on top of the library, Paul? That that most certainly is. Wow. So now, I mean, we have access to all the mana in the world. 12 so yeah. mana. Yeah, so he's got enough. So both of these Smoldering Eggs are set to transform next turn. Yeah, and I just... That's... I just, yeah. I, I just don't see how Mori can can fight, fight through all of this. It it does a really good job of trying to prevent you from doing something, but once you do the thing, uh, it does a, it is really poor at actually coming back from behind. That's right. And, you know, typical for blue-white decks, right? It doesn't have a lot of ways to get in any extra damage. Like, the creature lands are kind of the best thing it has. So here comes Memory Deluge now from Andre Strosky. That's double triggers on the eggs. And depending on what he finds, he can flip it without. But even then... He can still use the Memory Deluge flashback to do so. Wow, and he found Burn Down the House here as well. And I'm I'm looking at a top four competitor here, Paul. I just don't see how Mori can get out of this at this point. I mean, he's got nice, he's got an adversary and a huge angel, but what is he supposed to do here? Yeah, and Andre has a couple options. He can he's he's got he can just make devils here and then just and flip. Yeah. Yeah, and then you can just flip flip the smoldering eggs. Noryuki Mori is probably oh interesting. Probably gonna use a fateful absence here on one of the Ashmouth Dragons. Yep, that would make sense. But that that that's gonna give Strasky a treasure, which increases the likelihood that he finds spells. But you you do have to get one of these off the battlefield. Give him a clue, you mean, yeah. Excuse, yeah, excuse me, a clue. Even better. He's going to use it right now, Paul. He's like, hey, let's, yeah, let's could see find something. Got. All right, well, it's just an island this time. Elite Spellbinder, nothing to see with that. It does put out another big flyer. Because so far, Andre's been content to just use these birds as, you know, buying him additional turns. Right. Yeah, and the memory deluge Ooh. oh that's disgusting oh my goodness that is so gross divide by zero for the adversary he's also just going to be able to to kill it the good old-fashioned way with his ash mouth dragon it looks like because he's going for memory deluge and this is going to be a board state no longer here for for mori concerted defense is a desperation tactic for him here 
and Sipa, excuse me, Strasky can clearly just pay the mana here. And uh, yeah, <laughs> wh wh whatever you want. The world yeah. is your oyster at this point. Pick two non-lands, Andre, yeah. and uh, have some fun with it. This is uh, every control player's dream, by the way. Now you're in the driver's seat fully. And Nori Kimori just took his headset out because he's seen <laughs> enough. <laughs> hey, it would priority. be hard to watch. <laughs> it would be for uh, me, too. I'm grabbing a glass of water here. We've yeah. got a lot more magic to play. Although, if you're Strasky, you're good. You're done for the day. Real, real good for Andre Strasky, especially in this particular game where he found himself quite behind. And now he's going to crash in. And it's going to be a Redain off the top. So the so somehow a ghost is playing for Mori. <laughs> well, he, <laughs> How did that happen? He must be in a different chair or something. It's <laughs> kind of funny, though. Yeah. It, it is hard to blame him. Uh, yeah. Here comes the... The devastating divide by zero. Again, in, in conjunction with Ashmouth Dragon, these things are just getting worse and worse. All right, well, Mori's back. Yeah, and everything here is just a formality at this point. I mean, there is just no way Mori can fight. There's, are we going to see a copied mascot exhibition? I think I we are. I would love to see it. Again, <laughs> tokens deck, right? Yeah. <laughs> is it tokens? <laughs> right. Yeah, <clears throat> that does seem to be the name of the game here. Oh, geez, going, wow, going. really? Go, really, Andre? Style, style points here, Double Marshall. Galvanic iteration? Okay, buddy, All right. and now the mascot here exhibition times three? <laughs> wow, this is really just a question of how much more can Mori take, but he seems to be into it, he's watching. Hey, this come okay. on, I mean, how it. much power did he put in the play? That was that like 30. That was incredible. That was absolutely incredible. Oh, man. Even Andre Strosky <laughs> smiling at that one. And that is victory for Andre Strosky. He locks up top four after just seven rounds, a clean 7-0.